Are you stuck in your career and are you looking for a new career path? All right, that sounds a little bit too much like a uh, infomercial, but let's be real. We all get stuck eventually in our careers. We eventually either get bored of what we're doing or just realize we've kind of been doing the same thing over and over again for either two years, three years, five years. It kind of ranges for when people get hit by this, but we all feel stuck. And I recently got asked by a senior analyst this very question, you know, how do you get unstuck in your career? How do you kind of either maybe stop feeling like you're stuck or start looking for change and figuring out what you want to do next? And I think that's a very valid question. Again, we all feel it eventually. We all just find ourselves stuck writing the same code, doing the same migration, doing the same analysis, whatever it might be, whether you are a software engineer or even a data scientist, you probably eventually feel like you're doing the same work over and over again. And you need to find out, you know, what's new? How do I grow? And as someone who's felt this way several times in his career, here's what I generally notice as far as the path that I take. Kind of a step one. Usually in step one, you don't even really notice you are in a rut or kind of feel stuck for about three to six months. You know, you kind of start feeling maybe borderline, I wouldn't say depressed, but kind of down, kind of bored, but you don't really know why. It's kind of funny because the answer is kind of obvious, but you just kind of feel weird and you just kind of feel off. And that's kind of the first phase of this whole process. And eventually it probably clicks that you're like, okay, I feel stuck. I feel like I'm doing the same thing. You know, my tasks and work is all the same every day. I'm doing the same analysis and I'm kind of bored and I need to figure out what to do next. All right. Now you have admitted to yourself, you're stuck and you need to figure out how to get out of this rut. So step two is define what next is for you. You need to actually do some sort of due diligence or write down something in terms of a goal of where you wanna go. If you are a data analyst and you're like, okay, I wanna be a data scientist or you're a data analyst and you wanna be a data engineer, you need to define that. You need to tell yourself exactly what it is you want to do or you're just always going to read another article about someone else's salary or read another article about some role that's doing cool work that you want to be doing and you'll just be constantly chasing new skills you'll never actually pick and focus on one specific area so you need to tell yourself okay i want to be a data engineer i want to be a data scientist it just needs to kind of be clear because if you don't pick what you want to do next, it's very hard to do the next step, which is to take some sort of inventory of your skills. You need to kind of look at your skills and see, okay, a data engineer needs uh, data engineering skills like data warehousing, ETLs, some coding, SQL, etc. Whereas, you know, maybe if you're like, okay, I'm a data analyst, I've got some SQL. Uh, maybe you've got some Python because you've, you've done some Pandas. Maybe you've got a little bit of understanding in terms of a data warehouse because you've worked on top of it, but you've never actually had to build the tables yourself. And so you can start seeing where the gaps are. And this is an important step because if you want a new role, you need to actually have the skills most likely to get it. And so you'll need to figure out what skills you don't have in order to figure out what skills you need to learn. Once you know what skills you need to learn, the rest is kind of easy, only in terms of the fact that you now know where you need to go. At this step, it's very similar, at least to me, to my data science or data engineering interview guide, where I just kind of created a clear path forward in terms of what things you need to do to study for that kind of interview. In this case, you need to list out what skills you need to gain and the sources where you will be learning those skills. So if you're learning some sort of data engineering and you're like, okay, I need to learn data warehousing, you can spend some time putting, you know, a Udemy course in some sort of checklist or Google sheet, as well as like Kimball's book on data warehousing and a couple other things like on ETLs, as well as probably focusing on improving your programming skills and some other steps along the way. Now at this fourth step, you're really just checking off boxes. It's kind of simple. And I think this is again, very important that you've kind of got this clear path forward because otherwise having some sort of ambiguous goal really makes it hard for you to go forward. I think this is the mistake that a lot of us make is we're like, we want change, but we don't define what that change is. And I've seen this happen over and over again with other people where I actually used to spend time with a senior analyst that I was working with. And they literally asked me like, oh, I want to learn SQL and coding. And they really didn't have a plan for it. They just wanted to learn SQL and programming. And young, naive me was really excited to honestly share everything that I knew about programming and SQL with them. And we set up like hour long sessions going over SQL and Java. This was actually when I used Java, which I'll be honest, I haven't used or touched in like three years. But now I'm pretty much just programming Python, I think like most people. But I really did want to teach him everything that I knew because I thought it really would help him in his career. Eventually, though, what I would see is that 
he really didn't do anything with these new skills or even really pursue going deeper into them. Probably because he didn't really have a clearly defined goal, but instead was just like, oh, I want to learn programming in SQL, but for no real purpose. And I think that's why it's really important because if you don't really have a purpose for why you're doing something, you might not do it as well as you could, or you might eventually lose interest when you read the next article about, you know, whatever it might be, DevOps, MLOps, machine learning, deep learning, and now you're suddenly like, oh, I want to work in that instead. And so without having that clear path, you're just going to kind of eventually stall or just get stuck in tutorial hell, which is just something we kind of reference in the tech field, which is you're constantly just watching the new how to develop a neural network intro 101, you know, in 11 minutes or how to write your first Flask app or something like that. Something that's like very intro, but you never are looking to really improve your skills. You're just constantly restarting the next tutorial. And I think one of the reasons that this happens is there's no clear end goal. You're kind of just doing it because you think it's the right thing to do, but you haven't really taken ownership of your goals in your mind. And I think that's very important. One other thing that I don't always think is discussed when we talk about, you know, growth and trying to get unstuck is the fact that we're kind of comfortable being stuck. And in order to grow and get into a new position, you need to accept something. You need to accept that you will be uncomfortable with whatever form of growth you're going to be doing, because in a weird way, growth requires discomfort. You're not going to be doing something that is something you know every day. The reason you feel stuck is because you've gotten comfortable in this position. And the reason you might be kind of feeling a little bit itchy is because you want to be a little bit uncomfortable. I think we all desire to feel like we're growing constantly. And so when we feel stuck, we want to, we, we're trying to feel uncomfortable. And so you have to understand that and realize there will be discomfort. Uh, you know, growth is kind of scary, right? Like you're going into a place that you've never really been before. You know, if you're taking on a new role, going into a new company, these are scary things to do, right? Um, unless you're super confident, which I know some people are, some people just think they're amazing at everything. But I think most of us deal with things like imposter syndrome and, you know, just fearing if we're good enough constantly. And so you're going to be uncomfortable if, if it's because you're taking on a new role or you're taking on a new position at a company. Um, these are all things that require discomfort. So that's just an important thing that I think you need to realize is discomfort is part of the process. Uh, accept it now and uh, realize it's kind of enjoyable in its own way, as long as it's not too much, right? It's like stress just a little bit keeps us kind of on edge and makes it a little more exciting to learn things and do things uh, too much. Obviously, then we go into some sort of chaotic state, but just enough, I think makes life a little more interesting. So quick recap in order to get unstuck. Step one, realize that you're stuck. You know, again, you've been feeling kind of bad for three to six months, you're feeling too comfortable, it's time for a change. Step two, define what that change is. Where do you want to go? Kind of state, I want to be a data engineer. I want to be a director. I want to be whatever it is. And then that becomes a little clearer in terms of step three, which is define what you don't have in terms of what skills you need. You know, oh, I need to learn data warehousing. I need to learn uh, machine learning models, whatever it might be. And then step four, apply it and then go do it, right? Go learn that stuff, go find job opportunities where either internally at your company, you can take on some sort of similar project or go look for a new role at a different company, whichever it might be. I will say though, if you're taking on a new role that you haven't taken on before at a new company, that's a lot of stress at one time, right? Like I don't like to take on that many different things at once, but you know, we're all different people, but that's a lot of learning. And those are my tips for getting unstuck. If you're a developer or really if you're in any position, I think this should hit home because again, we all get stuck. It's part of the process. Uh, I think it's natural and it's just something internally that's telling us, hey, it's time to grow. It's time for something new. Again, it doesn't necessarily mean a new job. It might just be you need to get a new skill or you might need to maybe look to grow and get a promotion, whatever it might be. Hopefully this encourages you and uh, makes you feel better if you are stuck. And here's a very important step. If you watch this video because you feel like you're stuck in your career, one, stop this video, right? Like one reason you're watching this video is possibly because you're looking to feel somewhat productive in some way. In order to feel productive, you need to start doing something. So once you finish this video, stop it and go figure out what you want to do. Go define it, go set up your plan and go execute. Don't keep watching videos about getting unstuck. Don't keep watching videos about productivity. It's time to go do whatever you need to do. Thanks so much. Hopefully this was helpful for you. I really enjoyed this video just because it's not necessarily focused on tech, but I think it's something that we all deal with regardless of the position we're in. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.